real quick on how to spray with an HVLP and get little or no orange peel in your paint because you want it to be very smooth but I'm going to talk to you guys about the actual technique and what's required in your clear coat actually and on single stage urethane it kind of smooths out a little bit easier than the clear um, a lot of guys try and add reducer to their clear to try and get it to come out smoother but that actually compromises the clear and won't last very long if you do that it look great but so you're wondering maybe how these guys get these super show finishes and this is still uh, let's see that's pretty slightly modeled in there with the with the clear I mean got just a hair a real real fine orange peel but this was because I was using too low pressure so that's the reason and I'm going to explain to you guys the technology of it so that you understand exactly how to work this on your own if you're trying to uh, get a clear coat to look smooth and actually this will be no problem because this just buffs out but here this will color sand and buff real easy there's not a lot of orange peel in here at all and in the corners and edges there's almost nothing so sand about quarter of an inch away from the edges and it'll come out super smooth so anyway um, I'll talk to you guys about how to do this and uh, real quick and your gun settings and all that stuff and how to figure this out on your own okay the first thing we're going to talk about is gun settings um, and the gun you have uh, this is a Develbus Technopro light spray gun um, you can also use an Iwata uh, or a Sada, but you need to get the really good spray gun. You cannot have, okay, can you do that finish with a Harbor Freight tool spray gun? Well, kind of. Um, on a small area, maybe. Um, but if you're doing anything larger, you need a good spray gun. And let me tell you guys why. Okay, this gun at, I'd say around 10 pounds pressure. You do that by checking right here. This is a digital gauge, so you'll push, you'll have, the, have this thing hooked up to the spray, to the air, and you'll pull the trigger in. While the trigger's in, you push the button here, or this one. Right now it says 0, 0.0, I'm sure. It would say 14 pounds or 10 pounds or whatever with the trigger in. So you have air coming out of your air cap. It's just air, but you don't have any paint, and you're just looking at the pressure. So what my settings were for that which is really smooth. Let's look at it again. It's very, very smooth. There's almost no orange peel. You can see the welder there in the background. It's just got a little bit, very little. Um, the corners and stuff are pretty smooth. So, and I got a couple little tiny runs. It's better to have a couple runs and no orange peel rather than have a whole bunch of orange peel to sand out. Okay, so your settings. Uh, to do this are basically uh, the, the principle let me get a, go back here for a second the principle of what you're trying to do is you're trying to put in a fine mist of paint of, of clear not a heavy not a heavy coat it's not about how heavy you put it on it is partly but it's more about how fine it comes out of that spray so that's why I say, will the Harbor Freight tools do it? You know, to get it to be that fine, you'd probably have to turn your material, you turn it all the way off. This is the material. This is the fan on the top. Material's on the bottom. Crank this in all the way till it stops. Okay. Okay, I have it turned way out because I was just 
cleaning it. So it turns till it stops, okay? And you turn it out, like you'd have to turn it out maybe two or three turns, and then spray, okay? And if you got enough material, and you just open it, if you don't have enough material, then you have to open it up a little more and spray. But the whole thing is, is when you have that turned way down, okay, you you put out less material and it's able to break it up finer. So let me give you some settings here for this gun, what I was using. Technopro Light, 14 pounds, one bar, and it looks that smooth, okay? Why didn't I set it at two bar? If I wanted it to look better, you set it at two bar or or one, uh, 29 pounds. Don't say European methods because there's probably European guys watching too. Okay, why didn't I set it at 29 pounds or two bar or two bar? Because this thing, the fine mist that comes out when you do that, um, will. I mean, it, you have a huge cloud. Okay, you absolutely would need a spray booth. And what's a spray booth for? Is it to get no dust in the paint? Not really. You could get no dust if you'd used a garage somewhere or something like that. But to get no dust, no, to get what the spray booth does is it's movement in air. People think, oh, I can just put a bunch of fans in the garage. And <laughs> no, you need a lot of air movement. Those fans in those, in those uh, spray booths, they put so much CFM through there that as soon as you spray, when you watch videos of guys in a spray booth spraying, they pull their their spray gun and the mist just goes whew, right down to to the uh, to the downdraft booth or straight over to the to the other side. Um, it's gone right away. You can't have enough fans in your garage to do that. If you if you did, <laughs> you'd paint everybody's car in the neighborhood with that fine mist. So uh, if you're just Painting somewhere uh, and you want no overspray, you got to use low pressure. You can't crank these things up to full uh, 29 pounds. Okay, so at 14 pounds, I had the fan wide open, all the way open. Because if I turn the pressure all the way up to 29 pounds, I keep the fan wide open, it might be, you know, a 12 inch fan. It might be, you know, this wide. So you might want it turned in. It just depends on you, okay. And then, then if if you have it that wide, you might even be able to have this thing further open, okay. But it's all about getting a fine mist. So to get that that smooth, I had this at zero, and then I backed it off two and a half turns, okay, on this gun. You use a different gun it's gonna be completely different settings but the reason I'm gonna what I'm trying to explain to you is what you're trying to do is put out a large volume of air and less material through the gun so that the air is able to break it up and turn it into a fine mist a cheapy gun uh, Harbor Freight Tools one um, it, it, it it's not going to do the same thing this would i mean you're going to need to be at 30 pounds which is pretty much the max 29 pounds or something like that max and it's going to act just like this one does at 10. so do you think that you could do with a harbor freight the same thing that this does there's absolutely no way this puts out way more material than that does with the same amount of air pressure and it will make a much bigger fan so if you're doing something small, yeah, you can use your Harbor Freight Tools to spray gun, and it should be able to turn out okay, because you're going to have to go really, really slow, like really fine mist, really, really slow. Now, the other thing is, is distance. I was watching another guy's video, and he goes, why did I get, why did I get, you know, I was trying to spray this panel, and, um, you know, he was painting his car in his garage or something, which is cool, you know, hey. Everybody starts somewhere. 
he's spraying his car in the garage and he's going along and and he's like 12 inches away from the car and I'm like nah dude you need to be about between six and eight inches let's look at what that is it's about let me see if I can get this better so it's between six and eight inches is very close to the work it's like about right here okay look at the distance how close it looks when you're spraying you're going along between six and eight inches overlapping when you go overlap you don't overlap half of what you did like you do with base coat you go over 75 percent so you're only going up about 25 percent every time instead of going up 50 percent you're only going up 20 so if you start down here you can make a pass and you go across and you go up 25% of what you just, 25% higher than what you were instead of 50% higher, which is called a 75% overlap, okay? So they call it 75% overlap. And you can go a little bit faster when you do that than you did with the base coat. A little bit faster strokes, but less distance upward on every, on every pass. So you go across. And you go up 25% where you were, 25% up, 25% up, which is 75% overlap, 75%, and you stay really close to your work. And uh, you missed it on. So the reason for doing 75% overlap is because what you're doing is you're, when you go across and you do more passes at a higher speed, so the reason you do this at 75% is because it's the same principle as what you're doing by misting the paint to a finer mist. Um, and when you're talking about high solids clears and stuff like that, you need a really good spray gun to be able to break up that material. And you're probably going to turn down the material even more to try and mist it out of the gun. And you'll need that. You'll need that really good spray gun to get that material to even go down so uh, but when you overlap more what's happening is it's like a finer mist the same thing you're doing with oh more overlap is giving you your finer mist as well because those extra passes you're putting a little bit less material on in and, and more dots per square inch is what you're trying to get the most amount of dots per square inch the less orange peel that you get so let's uh, so let's back up again and kind of summarize this real quick so to get your clear to look good you really need a good spray gun let's talk about which ones to get Devilvis Tecna Pro Light Tecna uh, GTI Pro if you're in Europe um, it's inexpensive uh, in the US will work really well um, the Iwata uh, L, I think it's LS 400 Supernova. That's a really good clear gun, and that's going to get you that fine finish. Um, also, the SADA 4000, SADA 5000 um, is going to get you a really nice, smooth finish. And then it's all about the settings from there. So, some of them require you to turn your material way in some will keep you this one here if you have it at 29 pounds um, and you're spraying in a spray booth you're probably going to want your material all the way out okay wide open okay so that when you pull the trigger it's all the way as far as it will go you can turn it in a little bit and then and it and you know you feel it move a little bit going in and then you'll know you're all the way in, all the way out um, so if you're in a spray booth, you could probably spray it 29 pounds with the, this thing wide open, the fan wide open and, um, hang on, man, it's going to take you for a ride, real wide fan on this thing when it's open, about 29 pounds. So sometimes guys want to turn it in a half turn or something to get less fan because it's just huge. Um. But the Iwata, they say to turn the fan in a half turn to a turn on it because it's um, 
different if you're going at full 29 pounds. If you're going at less pressure, you have to turn the material way in and go slower. So, um, so, and you get less mist in the air by doing that. So, why do you need a spray booth? Is so that you can see. It's not about the dust. It's really about so that you can see what you're doing. Um, because if you do this in a garage and you're using one of these spray guns, you're going to have such a huge cloud in there. I don't care what kind of fans you have. You're going to have such a huge cloud in there. You're going to be, if you're doing something large, you're going to have trouble seeing. So that's, you know, so you're going to have to play with settings to, to make it work out in your garage. If you're going to do that, which, you know, hey, you got to start somewhere. You learn. That's how you learn. Um, if you're using a cheap spray gun, um, Harbor Freight Tool or something like that, you can only probably do a smaller area. If you try and do so, let's say you, you're at home, all you got is a Harbor Freight Tool spray gun, and uh, you want to paint your car. All right. Section it off. Try, don't try and paint the whole thing um, with good clear. You know, do like the roof and the hood or something at the same time. Then, then you can get your turn that sucker wide open and get the fan turned wide open. You might have to turn the material down just a little bit and crank that sucker sucker up to twenty nine pounds and go real slow and you know mist it on there. Practice what I'm telling you about misting. It's all about the mist. Finer mist, better spray. Less, less uh, orange peel. So anyway, that's how you do it. Um, and that's how you kind of figure it out on your own. Um, I'm trying to, to have it so you guys can think this through. Because uh, there's really not anybody else explaining this. So, you know, you know it's, it's, it's all. And this is what HVLP. I mean, back in the old days, when I used to use a high, pr high pressure gun. You just cranked it up to 60 pounds and it broke it up fine. It didn't matter. Just go like hell and spray everything and it would, you know, just go real fast. It was all about technique from there. Um, with these, it's all about settings and having the right clear gun and um, keeping, having that pressure turned up real high and turn, turning down your material. Instead of, instead, you know, you think... Well, I need it to go on heavier because it's not smoother. You really need it to go on finer. So you want your material turned in more, not out. So a lot of times when you're getting like fat orange peel, like when I shot the dash in this thing, I didn't really care that much. And I had the material too wide open. Okay. And I was using really low pressure. So, um, you know, that's how that happened. How you get orange peel from that is by having too low a pressure and then having the fan and having the material not turned way down too. So if you have a, you know, less air, you need less material. So like a Harbor Freight tools gun, when it has less air, you need to turn your material down to make up for it. Or, you know, and, and people say, oh, well, Mike, there's no way you can spray with a 2.5 and get a smooth finish. Well, I've done it. I used a 2.5 when I painted my daughter's car. My only thing I had was my primer gun, and it was my big primer gun, and it was clean. Everything else, I didn't even have this gun at the time, and I shot that sucker out with the 2.5. I just turned this knob here way in. It was down, you know, I was only like a quarter of all the material coming out, and the gun is good enough to where it would break it up. So that's how you do it. So anyway, that's kind of gets you a heads up on how to play with those settings. The trick is, is turn it down. <laughs> Don't turn it up. <laughs> turn it down. Get a finer mist and bring it out slowly until, you know, it, it, so you start out with a little bit of material coming out and then watch the mist go on. And if it's if the dots aren't able to connect together because there's not enough coming out, turn it up a little bit and then crank it, you know. And turn it up a little bit more. Turn it, you know, and go like that. Instead of cranking it way out and then bringing it down. Bring it in, bring it out slowly. And then um, that'll help you figure out your gun settings to get an orange peel. 
All right, I hope that helps you guys out. Um, there's only one way to learn. Just get out there and do the job. Try it. You know, start painting something. That's how I learned. Talk to you in the next video.